we now uh, change tack slightly, we have Jeff Hall, uh, who is uh, PSN, so Public Services Network, technical lead at the Cabinet Office. Um, Jeff is responsible for providing technical leadership to the PSN program, which is implementing a network of networks. I'm sure Jeff's going to tell us more about that. Um, really, he's going to talk to us about why the Public Services Network forms the basis of a new kind of marketplace. Over to Jeff. I was quite struck by Mike's um, comment that uh, Citizens Advice Bureau is, is lovely. And I was, I, I was thinking, wonder what people perceive PSN. I don't think we'd ever be described by anybody as lovely. I won't ask you to put your hands up on that one. Uh, <laughs> and probably not trusted, more feared, I would think, in truth. Um, so um, another anomaly in here is that uh, I'm PSN technical lead, as uh, the uh, introduction said, and I'm talking about marketing, which should be good for a laugh or two. But, um, hell, marketing people never stop talking technical, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Um, so, we, so PSN is a lot of fun, um, but it's also dogged by quite a lot of myths, so I thought I'd break a few, and that's why this is not going to be a technical discussion. Um, there's plenty of documentation on the web who, for those who like to read about MPLS and such. So what is it? Um, it's already, uh, and during the introduction I said it's a, it's a network of networks. It's a network of services. It's a network of people and organisations who want to network. When people talk about going and doing a bit of networking, I'm sure they don't mean connecting via MPLS. They mean going to a party, getting to know people, exchanging information. And PSN is about that in a funny sort of way. It's not a physical network, it's a network of networks. So it creates an environment that supports a new kind of market. So why? Um, why? Because I think you've just heard from, from Mike and Adam, uh, if, if I heard the word change once, I heard it about 500 times, and that's because that's real and you, it, you experience it as well. I heard words like agile and new services and, and, um, and new kinds of information exchange and new ways of communication. So when you step back and look at the public services and the, the whole environment, you end up with thousands of networks, all of which are different, most of which are not connected together, five and a half million people, thousands of sites. It's pretty inflexible. They've been bought in a bespoke manner, and I won't, I won't go on. But you understand those problems, that when you start doing the kind of social networking, the Blackpool and Taunton, did I get that right? Yeah. The Blackpool and Taunton example was perfect. If those two organisations aren't connected together, how on earth could they ever do social interaction? So, um, the old way of doing things wasn't sustainable. It doesn't scale in this modern world. Uh, when you've got a high rate of change, you've got hundreds of organisations that Adam was referring to, uh, Mike was referring to, uh, joining and helping him. We heard the word partnership there as well. Organisations that will come into existence, organisations disappear. That's a rate of change that hitherto didn't happen. Handling that on a, the kind of range of networks in the old style was a very difficult, very expensive, unaffordable, not workable proposition. So why do we get away from that? Well, the first part of that is we need seamless connectivity. When you connect to your broadband at home, you don't consider where your bank is hosted, where Amazon is hosted, where IP, BBC iPlayer comes from. You just connect and go. You use it. So the idea of PSN is to create an environment of seamless connectivity. Any service, anywhere on PSN, any information transported to where it's needed, provided it's appropriate. That's a small caveat in there because not everything should be everywhere in terms of your personal information, for example. So how do you partner an agile? You use that ability to transport information, exploit the services that could be there. As I said, it's a new kind of market, so it's a market for services, not a market for connectivity, except that we create a commodity of, the commodity of connectivity as part of that market. So it's an open market, and it's underpinning the transformation of ICT. So it's an enabler, it's not the end goal in itself. But we do desire to keep, create the effect, that effect of a single network. Now, we've heard a lot about change in the, in the last few minutes and, and an acknowledgement that change is hard. And I can tell you after four years, change is really hard on this scale. And uh, 
we've had some great times doing it and we've had some tough times doing it through the, through the ups and downs of doing it, but we are getting there. And there's a, a logical way to bring change about. We're not building a network, so we can't create a paint-by-numbers plan and say, right, first you, first you get your core network and then you get your access and then you put your services on. It isn't like that. We're actually taking something that people use today, all of the networks, the four-man network the networks, largely exist in some form or another today, and we merge them together against common standards so that they interconnect properly and operate properly. That sounds fairly straightforward. Um, any of, anybody who might have had any involvement with things like IETF and ITU will know that standards is not something you undertake lightly, and it never happens quickly because you've got vested interests and negotiations, and somewhat like the, um, the fisheries negotiations that the government was talking about this morning on the radio. It takes a long time. However, we have herded the cats, and we do have our, um, our, we have our foundation layer. We've established ourselves. We have our first delivered networks. We have some procu uh, uh, converged procurement. Um, and we have industry-led standards in place and published. And as I say, for those of you who like reading about technical standards, they are all on the web. But it is a journey. We have to move, and we have moved forward, um, embracing that technology, getting part partners on board, getting users on board, getting the first services on there, standing up the centralized services that, that glue it together. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't come with no central cost, but it is essentially, it's the networks interconnecting. But um, you will uh, understand that you need to sort out little things like addressing and, um, and certain types of routing and, and other things in order to make it operate. Um, and then once you've done that, of course, people want to put more services on, so we go on and enhance and exploit finally that. And hopefully what we've done then is to light the blue touch paper to an environment that supports innovation. Um, and new initiatives. Now that in itself is something of a change and why I said it, it's a new market. Um, if we look at the way we used to do things, and maybe we still do, you go through a cycle of understand what the need is, define it, consult with industry, redefine it, consult again, go out to purchase, winner, build, execute, and that whole process takes years. Now as we've just heard, the rate at which services and applications and the ability of people to communicate is changing is much faster than that. So the consequence of that situation is that what we build, what we build by that route is five years out of date on its first day of use. So what we want to do is to create a network of networks that supports a vibrant, innovative environment for people to put services on. Not services that PSN dictates, but services that people innovate and bring to a market. So that's a change. It's a change for our suppliers because they're used to responding to, I have a requirement, then there's a bid process, they will then respond to it. What we're asking them to do is invest products in a marketplace in an innovative way based on industry best practice. I'm sure you heard that this morning a little bit um, regarding the ICT strategy. What we want to do is to have the way in which large and small enterprises operate today transferred into the public sector. PSN is the environment that enables that to happen. But the other part is this new marketplace, the marketplace that says that suppliers understand that it's a requirement in the marketplace generally, invest in products, bring those products to market for consumption by the public sector, rather than waiting until the public sector puts its hand up and says, I have a need, and then five years later that need gets resolved, except as everyone in this room I'm sure knows, by that time the need has changed. So um, it has been a, a long journey. and. We have managed to get somewhere with it, and the results speak for themselves. We've got a large family. It isn't, again, imposed from the centre. We have a family of organisations who, seeing the opportunity, uh, have started to develop their own areas and bring it to the family of PSN. So what we learned was once you do have the right environment in place, then genuinely they will come. And, and uh, some are very enthusiastic, and we, believe it or not, rather than us pulling from the centre, we get people beating us up for not having enough in the centre to support what they want to do. Um, so um, I, I really bless early adopters. Without them, we'd be nowhere. So a great deal of um, enthusiasm and activity. And the result of that is that um, the market exists. And it exists because we can show the, spending the, uh, the, the savings and benefits from it. Now, what that does tell us is that you can create a market. And not only that, when you put the motion, put it in motion to create that market, 
you start to make savings before you've even completed building the thing that creates that market. Why? Because the suppliers believe the market exists, therefore they start pricing and bidding into that market in a way that uh, makes them present themselves as aggressive and participants. So savings are there even before you finish, which is handy in the, in the current environment. And all of this results in, um, in some scepticism, of course, but uh, <laughs> particularly like that one. <laughs> It's a bit of a shock when, uh, when something starts working, it, especially when it's, it's been a long, hard road to get there. But work it does. So in the terms of market rather than technology, um, we have large, uh, before I go into the market, I, I just explain, we do have the network interconnects up and running. We do have traffic flowing over them. We are working our way up the security layers from, um, from the basic level that people would ex have experienced with GCSX, for those who are familiar with it, and working our way up the stack so that uh, we can provide a comprehensive set of services. So not everything that people might want to consume is there today. But what we see is, because we now have the frameworks in place, we see, and this, these are uh, the last six months, March previous, going back six months, as you see the new frameworks for PSN come into being, so the take-up accelerates rather rapidly. <clears throat> and what you also see is that initially people buy connectivity, and then, then the services start to come on top of that which is not terribly surprising because you build the house after the foundations. But the pipeline actually is quite interesting. Is that first uh, bar on there um, is actually the previous chart. It's just in that first little bar. So we go from this modest, if, if reasonably exciting, start to some very big numbers indeed, where you end up with uh, total sales of around 1.4 billion. So I would contend when we get to that, we really have created a market. And if that's a competitive market, then public sector will benefit from the savings uh, that come out of that being a commodity-based, industry best practice product rather than bespoke government product market. On the other side, from an industrial point of view, although that attacks some individuals' revenues, the reality is that if you operate properly in a market, you make better profits, which shareholders tend to like. So it can be a win-win without, um, with, without, so that we gain and their revenues go down but their profits go up. Everybody gains because we're getting standard product. It works. And what's more, the, work, the product works in the same way as it does in industry, and in some instances, the same way as it does at home. And going to, to, uh, to Mark's point, it means that the generations that come in to work in the public services will be using tools um, that they would have been familiar with elsewhere, not having to learn to use the systems that government uses uniquely, amongst other benefits. And I suppose, as I was relating at lunchtime, it also means that, that people in the public services can benefit from the kind of services that industry has been taking for granted for about 10 years. If, when I came from industry into public sector, the biggest shock for me was dropping down from not being able to do things that I was doing in 2003, not being able to do them in 2013. Um, a simple example is I used to travel a lot in my previous job. I could work out of Singapore airport on the Wi-Fi. I could bring my telephone from my desk in the UK to that PC in Singapore Airport. I could bring all my messaging, I could bring all my emails, I could bring my entire office to that one environment in Singapore Airport. I can't do it outside of the building opposite, <laughs> except at home under very strict circumstances. And even that doesn't bring the phone, it only brings the email. So I want to move. Want, the effect of PSN is that the organisations, wherever they are, Blackpool, Taunton, uh, can work together effectively because they're all connected together, because the market supplies the kinds of services that make people productive in a cost-effective way, to put it in a nutshell. So what will happen as we... Um, yeah. Uh, so what we will expect to happen then is as the next generation of frameworks happens, so, that, so we will move to a smaller, lots and lots of smaller buys rather than vast buys. And what that also does is it opens out to, um, to the wider public, make it easier for the wider public sector to become a dominant part, interestingly, of, of the market picture. And that really is a response to some of the things that you've seen in policy change, in that if you look at the devolvement of things like healthcare out towards the local communities, that means that they're buying lots and lots of small things rather than one big thing at the centre. And there's a lot of them, so they have a very big impact on the behaviour of our market. So more buyers, placing smaller orders, less complexity, 
smaller and more innovative suppliers as well, and simpler ordering procedures. All of those add up to a fast, agile market. So immediately, um, we've, we've had our first um, central government awards. Uh, we have a large number, as you saw from some of those press cuttings, of regional consortia coming into the to connect to us on the wider public sector. Our authority, which provides the governance of the centre, is up and running, and some of the cyber enhancements are also in place. And the thing called the Government Convergence Network, which sits at the, the core of it, just connecting things together, is starting to be heavily used. And I suppose I have one of my um, smug, told you so moments when I look at some of the incumbent suppliers who told me that we would never need more than one gig of interconnectivity because, and I quote, the government never talks to each other. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that uh, in the first instance, they've already had to upgrade or are planning to upgrade the capacity beyond one gig for some of these uh, interconnects. <laughs> so um, that, that was quite an enjoyable moment. <laughs> and finally, um, we're starting the process of migrating for what G GSI or GCF away, and that's 588 customers in the local customers in the first instance, and they will all become PSN customers and consume exactly the same services that they, they needed before. So GSI will shut down, and we will end up with that community. Ultimately, the health community will join us, the central government communities, and so everybody who's exchanging information in the public sector will have this underpinning of PSN, anything, anywhere, connectivity. Um, there's also, uh, as, as was the case with, um, with GSI, the concept of non-central, uh, sorry, non-central um, government and non-public sector organisations using PSI, PSN, and uh, that comes about because as you, you, you cease to be able to make the distinction between what is truly public sector and what is an agency supplying a service on behalf of public sector, um, as is the case with um, uh, local surgeries and so on, which are effectively pub private businesses, and uh, the relationships that the MOJ has with um, uh, uh, with solicitors and so on. So all of these things are blurred lines, which uh, PSN will cater for by one means and another. So finally, it's built on a few pillars. Uh, um, one of the things that we do get a lot of people complaining about is things like codes. But in the end, for, if everyone's going to exchange information freely and confidently, there has to be an element of trust. If there's trust, then there must be some basic standards in which people trust. Otherwise, it's a free-for-all. You might as well chuck everything on the internet. And if you do that, you'll find very quickly, if you're unguarded, that uh, it will be consumed in interesting and unwanted ways. So trust in systems, the ability to monitor, the ability to provide resilience. After all, if your information is being passed and it's a matter of life and death, you really don't want to be at the, uh, at the hands of, of systems that are subject to um, random failure. So the PSN marketplace is open, we've delivery started, and we're moving up the stack of, um, of uh, complexity and security. And there's been a huge amount of progress, and although I've had a little dig occasionally during this at the suppliers, by and large they've come with us and worked very hard. We've had some great help from suppliers, big and small, in defining PSN and making it real. But as you saw from the numbers, 1.4 billion, the big prizes are really ahead of us in terms of the monetary savings and in the terms of people like Mark and Adam and others being able to make use of this facility to do things that we would never have imagined when we started. Thank you.